Joining us at the desk, one of the biggest names in the business. He's a music mogul. He has a new show. We'll get into that. He also helped build careers like Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, Drake, and so much more. Thank you so much for being here. We welcome to the desk, Birdman. No. Let's see. We so appreciate it. Let's start with a little NBA. What did you think of Wade leaving for his hometown, oh, Chicago? Man, it broke our heart, man. <laughs> I'm, I live in Miami. And I've been there for the last 10 plus years. Um, I personally think Wade should have, I would have allowed him to finish his career mm -hmm. behind a few million dollars. Four to be exact. Four million dollars. Yes. Uh, Hassan Whiteside signed for 98 million but was willing to shove aside about $4 million if they could get Kevin Durant. When Kevin Durant decided to go to Golden State, D-Wade was like, all right, then that four should be for me. And they were like, no. Nah. Wow. I think he deserved the respect. Um, <laughs> he did a lot for the city, a whole lot for the city. It was called Wade County. Um, he deserved it to me. I wouldn't have, me, as, if I'd have been the, you know, the, Hot choke, I wouldn't allow it, me personally. Mm. I think Riley that. did allow it, right? Because he's acting now like he's upset about it. Riley, I mean, he didn't, he didn't hot choke. So you got to pour it, you got to pour it on him. But I mean, the city is devastated, you know? Um, everybody when, wanted a way to stay. When you say that, that they were devastated, paint a picture for me of what it's like or what it's been like in Miami in the days that followed since D Wade announced he was going to Chicago. It's like sad out there, man. You know, um, Miami take the basketball culture real, real serious. Um, it's, ever since I've been in the city. So um, for D. Wade to leave, it's like, it's, it's, it's devastating to the fans. You know, we spend a lot of money on them tickets, man. You know, cost to go to them games. Real money to sit on that wood. For D. Wade to leave, that was a, that was a, that was a hurt, a real hurt. People driving around and with a quarter tank of gas in their New Year class because they had to spend money on those Miami tickets. You understand? It was worse than that. They took all the pictures down and, you know, D. Wade all over the... We used to that. He'd been there. He gave his, his life to that town, to that city. One of the things I've mentioned to both Molly and Max is this. I want to know how folks in Miami are feeling about Pat Riley right now. I respect the man. They're obviously a great organization. But in two of the last three years, you've LeBron and D Wade have walked out the door. That's big. I want to know how the city's feeling about him right now. Really, them, them top-notch names in the game. You just can't allow that to happen. But it happens. So, but with Pat, bro, you really never know, bro. The dude is a genius. He know how to put things together. So, but, and then you might not understand his mind frame or what he's thinking. But still, it's a big hit to the town. A real big hit. You're a Saints fan as well, correct? Definitely. Why? What do you think about what's going on with Drew Brees right now? He's 37 years old, but they don't have a deal worked out. One of the greatest quarterbacks you're ever going to see. What's in the future? What do you see? I think they should break bread. Give him a check. I mean, getting a quarterback, without, you know, football is totally different from basketball. Without the brains, you might have the sideline brains on a coaching field, but we need a solid quarterback. There's not too many of them out there who can really give you a chance to go to the Super Bowl every year. So I think Drew Brees deserve his check. What they hold in the bank fund, they got it. I don't know. Well, in the NFL, you got a hard salary cap. That might have something to do with it. But when it comes to Drew Brees, you do what you got to do, especially when you don't have a defense to support him. That offense is carrying that franchise. But let me transition to your show, Music Mogul, obviously, uh, is a star-studded cast. Talk to me about how the show came about and specifically what y'all are trying to accomplish. Music Mogul, BT, talk to me about that for a second. Um, it was brought to me by Ray J and um, Lemmy. Um, Ray J is a friend. I personally didn't have no interest in it in the beginning. It's always been discreet with my life. I never wanted to exp exp open myself to nothing, really, personally. Um, but then I thought it might be great to do something for my young artists. Not talking about Wayne, Drake, and Nicky, because they, to me personally, on cruise control, they, they self-contained in this game. So um, I thought what we do all have in common is we're trying to help somebody. We're all trying to help a young man uh, change somebody's life uh, in some kind of way. So um, I think the show is positive, and we need it because we can get a star out of it. Because all four of us,
commonly we have in general is trying to help a young man become successful. So I think in that sense, it's worth constantly to keep doing because we can help somebody. What's the key to their success? Um, that, I mean, the drive that we give them, besides that, it have to come from them having talent. I can't make, I could put you in a position to sell, but I can't make people buy your music. So you just have to have that, that special within yourself. You know, <clears throat> I'm gonna try, I'm gonna get a little deep here because I think about the show. I know Snoop, mm -hmm. known Snoop for years. Obviously, both of y'all have checkered backgrounds and have made a great success for yourself. And I'm thinking about what we're seeing take place in this day and time. One of the things that I just spoke about, Max and I just spoke about the other day, was the violence in the streets of Chicago. We see President Obama with his Brothers Keepers initiative. We see NBA athletes and others, uh, like Steph Curry and others, getting tremendously involved trying to make that contribution and bring light to a lot of the positive things that could potentially come from some of these things if we reach back and help those who are less fortunate than ourselves. I want to know what role, if any, you guys desire to play, the kind of conversations you guys have about what's going on in these streets, considering the fact that you, that you guys came from the streets and elevated yourself to this point. Could you talk to me about that? I think, personally, out of any sport, I look at what we do as a sport, and we really in the streets. They made it come from the streets. Our lifestyle is is in the streets. So, um, you know, I think what's going on, the police, man, it's, it's not nothing new, bro. I, come, I grew up in the projects. It's been going on, bro. Um, and, you know, I speak to Minister Farrakhan all the time, and he speak about this. He's been speaking about this for years. At some point, it just got to stop. And, and all our verses and what we bring to the table really is going to help it to stop because now we all, it's been going on, but now we all see it as a, as a country, as, a, as, as a, what's going on. And I just think it's foul to be just shooting a person. Mm. Oh, that, I, I don't understand that. I got you. Birdman, thank you. Appreciate your time, perspective, and we can catch your show Tuesdays on BET? Every Tuesday. Yes, All right. good stuff. Thank you. No, thank you all for having me. All right. Coming up next, Carmelo Anthony wasn't sure if he was going to play for Team USA in the Olympics when his close friends LeBron James, Chris Paul, and Dwayne Wade decided not to play. That was when the players who committed to the team encouraged Anthony to come back for a chance to win a third Olympic gold medal, an accomplishment no American men's basketball player has yet achieved. Quote, they were saying, it's your time, your Olympics. You should take advantage of this opportunity. Once the guy started reaching out and talking to me about that, it felt good to hear my colleagues want me to have that. Mr. Smith, should Carmelo be playing in the Olympics? No. Um, it's nothing different than I've told him before. Uh, and, you know, I know and got mad respect for all of them mm -hmm. and mad love for him and D-Wade and CP3 in particular. Um, but let me be very, very clear. I don't give a damn about a gold medal. I'm sorry to sound unpatriotic because I'm not. I root for USA. I'm an American, okay, and proud to be one. And I'm going to be rooting for Team USA in everything. I don't care what the event is. I personally don't believe that we need those superstars in order to win gold, number one. Number two, and more importantly, I don't believe NBA superstars should be jeopardizing themselves by participating in Olympic competition when they're getting their checks from NBA teams and owners. But in the case of Carmelo Anthony specifically, let me be very, very clear. I consider, at least up until a year or two ago, I considered Carmelo Anthony one of the top five offensive players of this generation. He is that big time. Certainly not so much defensively, but offensively, he is that big time, Max. He is that big time. But he's 32. He, over the last two seasons, he's missed 52 games. 40 the year before, 10 last year. 
he isn't 100, even if he is 100% healthy, as you pointed to, age, attrition, father time comes creeping in. Carmelo Anthony has never played in an NBA Finals. Carmelo Anthony is in the league for the last 13 years, and only once has he been to a conference finals. Your boy, one of your boys who you are incredibly tight with, has been to six consecutive finals. He's got three rings, okay? Um, and he's been to seven finals in his career. The other one of your boys is a three-time champion who has been to five. Aren't conversations just a tad bit odd? Is it just me? Is it just me? I, I don't know. But, but what I'm saying is, when I look at it from that perspective, the priority to me should be all about winning a championship, going for it, exhausting every means and measure necessary to get to that point. And when I look at Carmelo Anthony, who has two gold medals, now, mind you, I wouldn't be saying this if he never played in the Olympics. But he has not won two rings, two gold medals, I'm sorry, two. What the hell is the third going to do? He'd be the first. I, 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 really? That's Maybe what, he feels like I can't get really, rings, so I'll get really, three medals. Really? I, I mean, in America, I'm going to put myself out on the limb. In America, as it pertains to a superstar NBA player, we don't really give a damn if you have a gold medal or not. Especially if you already have one. What we care about is the ring. And especially me being a diehard New York Knicks fan, that's what I care about. I don't care to see him in Rio. Okay. Uh, much as it pains me to agree with my esteemed colleague Stephen A. Smith, I think we're just going to have to go with the Olympics today. Look, the Olympics are a scam. Kids, the Olympics are a scam, especially for, for professional players. What do I mean by this? It's a scam. Everyone gets paid. If they asked any one of us to go cover the Olympics, are you doing that for free? No. Are you doing that for free? Would this network cover them without selling commercial time? Every, would the commercials just be buying time to not sell their products, or would they be selling their products? Would the ushers get paid? Every, is it good for the economy of the city that hosts the Olympics? Sort of the profile of the nation that hosts it? It's good for every single person involved except for labor. The actual participants don't get paid. Boy, that is a sweet deal. And they get duped into competing. And by the way, like you, I am patri I'm a patriot. I love this country. I love it. And, and USA when we're in the Olympics, of course. Hardcore. I'd rather be. I'm just saying, let's be honest. The athletes are duped by using this idea of patriotism to make money for everyone involved except for themselves. Now, why did the dream team, why did professional players in the NBA start playing in the first place? Because the rest of the world caught up to us and it started to get embarrassing. And so we said, okay, how about this? We'll actually send our best players instead of those Eastern European countries whose best players weren't getting paid anyway and qualified for the Olympics at the time. We're gonna send our best players and we'll see what's what. And we slaughtered everybody, it was over, right? But once that had been established, there's no reason to keep doing it. Now, I, for, how about this? How about the Lakers a couple years ago? Pau Gasol competes in the Olympics, not even for Team USA, for Spain, and then he's exhausted by the time the season starts, had a bad season, was getting older, a seven-footer, had injury problems. The Lakers are the team that's paying him, but competing against the United States, and oh, it's a good thing for him, he's competing in the Olympics. No, it wasn't. It was a bad thing for him, and it's a bad thing for Carmelo. You know who the Olympics are good for? I will, let's be practical about this. Boogie Cousins a couple years ago, mm -hmm. right? You have a young 20s emerging star. See, I don't mind that. Me neither. I don't mind Me that. Neither. You, have a, you have an emerging star whose brand is not as significant as his talent and his skills yet, who, could, who could, would be served, his game would be served by being around a winning culture and other world-class players and world-class coaching, and who, whose recognition would go up by participating, it's, and who's not injury-prone. Mm -hmm. Very good for a guy like Boogie Cousins. It is idiotic for a guy like Carmelo Anthony. We agree about that. It just, it, it, I, you know what, to me, I'm not even thinking about the intellect behind it, whether it's an intelligent or idiotic decision. I'm not going there. I got too much respect for him to do that. Where I'm going is, is that I challenge any basketball fan in the United States of America to genuinely tell me that they care about seeing him in the Olympics. What you care about if you 
are a fan of Carmelo Anthony, if you are a Knicks fan, if you are a NBA fan, what you care about when you see Carmelo Anthony is Carmelo Anthony being in peak condition and peak form, ready to vehemently pursue an NBA championship, especially since two of the three brothers you are known for hanging out with most got six rings between them. Amen. And 12 NBA Finals appearances combined. I mean, come on. I, 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 I'm just saying. You don't see any of them playing. Listen, <laughs> that, that's all. I'm, I'm like, yeah. yo, you got.